Hi, my name's Dale and welcome to Metal Tips and Tricks. I've got an exciting little trick to show you on the milling machine I'm sure you're going to love. I had this part come in today and it, it's, it's not a hard part to do. It's made out of plastic. We're going to make it out of steel. Well, when I made this part, you know, you look at it, it's not that tough. You break it down. It's basically a rectangle with two holes drilled in it and a milled slot here. Very easy until you get to this radius. And that is something that's frustrating to me because it takes so long to set it up on the rotary table and do it that way. I wanted to come up with a faster, easier way. And as you know, every day is a school day in the machine shop. We're always learning something new. Well, I started to think about it and came up with a different way to get that radius I think you guys are gonna like. Now, one thing about this radius is almost all of these have something in common, is there's always a hole in the center that we can pivot from. And that's what we're gonna take, it of, a, take of advantage here. I've got a block here I've just kind of cut out to show you this tip. And what we're gonna end up doing is putting a pin in it. Now you see that pin rotates. Now the distance, well actually let me put it in here and show you. So what we're gonna do is we are going to put it in the vise and we're gonna turn it and just keep cutting it and putting multiple facets on the radius. Now some of you are gonna say, well, the distance from this center to this will keep changing as I rotate it. But if you look at it, as I rotate this pin, you can see the center mark right there is always at the same height. Therefore, we can assume that as we rotate the part, pivoting on this, that center and that edge will always be the same distance. So let me show you how you do this. First, we have to line up the part so we know that the cutter is right on this edge. Let me bring this up a little bit. See how this is just kind of loose? If I go in with a cutter, especially like a two flute cutter, I just lower the cutter in it and it's set. We tighten the quill. Tighten the vise. Now, we're gonna be a little too tight, a little too tight from what I wanna do. So we're gonna lower the knee down. We're gonna center the dial, put it on zero. Gonna lower the knee, take out the backlash, come back up. And we're gonna stop about two thousandths right before zero. Right there, don't forget to turn your handle around. The weight of the handle can vibrate and cause your knee to lower and we don't want to have that happen. Now we've got about a 2007 inch clearance and we can start cutting. Let me put some safety glasses on or eyeglasses in this case. So what I want to do is back this off. And we're just going to rotate that a bit. And I'm going to bring it into the vise quite a ways so I have got as much material clamped as I can. Turn this on. Now get ready guys, I'm going to shoot some chips your way. Now you can see the facet and the radius starting to develop. We're going to turn around to the other side. Don't have to remeasure. We just have to start cutting. Yeah. 
You can now see how that radius is developing, but now we have a point on the top that we have to eliminate. Well, you're a machinist, guys. Think outside the box. I'm showing you the pin on top. Let's change that around and let's go this way. And we're going to realign. We're going to pick one of those facets. Come up to there, back it off a bit. Going to tighten the table. And now we're going to switch handles that we're going to turn. So again, it's the same theory. Keep that pin tight against the vise. So now for all you trolls, I gave you some really good food on that one, didn't I? To be safe, I should have shut off the machine on each facet that I cut. I didn't do that for a reason because of time. But look at how that is right now. Isn't that nice? Now at this point, if I want to make that better, I just have to put it back in the mill and start knocking off the high points. At this level of the job, I could go to the grinder or belt sander grind that off, I could file that. It just matters how accurate I need it. So let's look at it with a radius gauge. That's a pretty nice fit. Think how fast that was. Now if I want to, I could go in there and really clean up and I think, you know, let's do it. So there we go, just a matter of minutes. That's a pretty nice fit. There's room for improvement, but the concept is strong. Now look at all those little facets there. There's so many that I can probably just take a file and eliminate them quickly. Look at that. Just a matter of minutes. So there we go, guys. That's my tip for the day of how to make a radius. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please take the time to do that. I'd really appreciate that. Please give me some thumbs up. Also, leave some nice comments for me. Love to hear from you. All right, guys, until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. like I did with the other bit is I did a depth of a thousand, uh, 70, I did a depth of that, 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 I did a depth that was a lot. I did a depth that was um, somewhat deeper than it was.